Hi everybody, I'm Kimon Beckelis and this is the YouTube channel of the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island. Today we wanted to do a segment on something that's been requested uh, extensively by you guys, and that is understanding medical jargon. Of course, all of us interact with the medical establishment, we see physicians, our families see physicians, and we come across terms um, that are unfamiliar, of course, to the untrained person. And so we've asked you to send us some terms that confuse you, some terms that you have questions about, and um, you have. And so I'm gonna go through some of them. We've picked uh, the most popular ones and try to explain them really briefly. So uh, a common one that of course is uh, near and dear to our heart is stroke, right? What is a stroke? And the stroke is the blockage of a blood vessel that normally brings blood and oxygen and nutrition to the brain. When that is blocked, the tissue downstream or the brain tissue that normally would get blood from that blood vessel dies. And, um, and when that happens, obviously somebody develops a deficit, weakness, numbness, and ability to speak. Um, and that's what a stroke is. That's the ischemic stroke. The hemorrhagic stroke is when there's bleeding in that part of the brain and that's how the brain tissue dies. And of course you have the same weakness, numbness, and ability to speak the same the same symptom, so to speak. In the setting of uh, a stroke or an ischemic stroke, some folks ask what is a thrombectomy, which is something we talk about often. A thrombectomy is removal of that blood clot that prevents the blood from flowing uh, into the brain. And we do that mechanically by navigating our catheters and wires through the groin all the, wire, all the way up into somebody's brain and either sucking that clot out with special suction catheters or using a stent um, think of it as a fishnet to grab the clot and get it uh, out of the brain. Another question we often get is what is an anticoagulant? An anticoagulant is a medication that thins the blood to prevent clots from forming in order to prevent a stroke. That's often used in the setting of abnormal heart rate, what we call an arrhythmia, and one of the most common ones, especially in the folks over the age of 55, is atrial fibrillation. Another commonly used term that folks are asking about is uh, cerebral edema. That's swelling in the brain, and that can happen either because of stroke or because of uh, traumatic brain injury. Uh, folks are also asking about cerebral embolism. That is very common, um, commonly used, not so much in the physician setting, uh, uh, but, but uh, it's, it actually means pretty much what a stroke is. It's the blockage of a blood vessel that leads into the brain, and that can cause a stroke. So a lot of times when we do studies to look into the brain, we use contrast dye. And folks are asking, what is contrast dye? Well, it's a chemical that really is injected into your vein or into your artery, depending on the type of study that we're doing. And by using x-ray, we can detect it, right? So if it's carried by the blood, uh, then we can see it flowing uh, and because it's radiopaque, meaning uh, it shows up when we uh, perform radiation and that allows us to see the flow of blood inside the brain either through the arteries or through the veins and that gives us invaluable information about the structure of the blood uh, or the structure of the blood vessels in a way where we can detect blockages uh, in the setting of a stroke or we can detect aneurysms or enlargements in the blood vessel and that's another common question what is a brain aneurysm right brain aneurysm is like a balloon on the side of the blood vessel very much so if you had a car tire and you had a soft spot, you'd have a little ballooning happening. So another question we often get is what is general anesthesia for getting a procedure, right? And how does it compare to local anesthesia or some sort of sedation? What general anesthesia is, uh, is when we administer medications through your IV inside your vein or um, inhalational, meaning somebody breathes in those medications and those are actually putting somebody are putting somebody to sleep in a way that we have to control their, their breathing, using a breathing tube, but also often uh, control their bodily functions through medications and through a machine. That's uh, in, in direct contrast to local anesthesia or some sort of sedation where somebody can uh, receive medications through the IV or again inhalational, but those medications will not put somebody entirely to sleep, uh, but they will be in some twilight uh, state where um, to some extent they can still communicate but not remember, but you can still do procedures without causing pain and without having memory of the procedure. Obviously, 
For the most invasive procedures, you need general anesthesia. For the least invasive procedures, shorter procedures, you can do them with local sedation. Another question that we often get in the setting of stroke, uh, in the setting of atherosclerosis, is what is plaque? We often refer to plaque in the carotid arteries or in the blood vessels of the brain. Plaque is the formation of a blockage inside the blood vessel that's the result of accumulation uh, on the wall of the blood vessel. Think of the blood vessel as a tube. Uh, accumulation of plaque, which is cholesterol, calcium, uh, several sorts of deposits in that blood vessel wall that make it narrower and narrower to the point where um, you can have substantial uh, decrease in the blood flow through that area. And the biggest concern when it comes to plaque is that it can change abruptly, it can become friable, and it can um, send parts of it inside the brain and cause a substantial blockage which then results in a stroke. In the setting of brain aneurysms, we often also talk about vasospasm. And, uh, and folks ask us about that. Vasospasm is when a blood vessel temporarily clamps down and decreases the blood flow into the brain. And that's temporary. And of course, sometimes we can treat it either with medications or with uh, other interventions. Uh, what is an angioplasty? Very, very frequently asked question. An angioplasty is when you use a balloon to stretch up, open a blockage inside a blood vessel. That can be in the setting either of vasospasm that we spoke about before, or it can be in the setting of plaque formation or uh, stenosis. Now, when it comes to open brain surgery, a uh, commonly uh, used term is a burr hole. Uh, when folks are getting uh, treatment for blood collections in the brain secondary to trauma, and a burr hole um, is a, a very simple procedure that involves creating, using a drill to create a hole uh, on the bone uh, covering the brain to allow blood uh, to drain out, uh, especially uh, blood that's not as fresh, liquid blood that can easily come out. And now another term frequently used is a craniotomy or a craniectomy. And what is the difference between the two? A craniotomy is when you remove the bone uh, overlying the brain in a certain area with the intention of going inside the brain and treating some sort of pathology at the end of the procedure, you put the bone back on. A craniectomy is when you completely remove the bone and store it uh, typically uh, in a freezer in a sterile environment where you can put the bone back on um, several weeks down the line. And that happens when there's substantial brain swelling and you cannot really put the bone because having a rigid skull will cause injury uh, to the brain. And so removing the bone and allowing it uh, to, to be in a sterile environment and then reimplanted prevents that injury and allows the patient to swell, go through that swelling phase, make sure that the brain doesn't get injured, and then uh, put the bone uh, back on. A couple more terms that we frequently uh, get questions about and you guys were asking about is hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is the buildup of fluid inside the brain, right? We all have fluid inside our brains. We have normal fluid spaces, but in some cases, that fluid can be too much. And when that's the case, you build up pressure and you might need to do some secondary interventions to prevent injury. And that is what hydrocephalus is. Intracranial pressure, that goes hand in hand with hydrocephalus. Intracranial pressure is the pressure inside uh, the cranial cavity. And when that increases, that can cause, of course, uh, substantial injury. Um, Recanalization, right? Recanalization in the setting of stroke meaning means reopening of a blood vessel, opening it up again to allow the blood uh, to flow inside the brain. And the last term that people asked about uh, is external ventricular drain or ventriculostomy. That is the placement of a thin tube um, through the skull, through the brain, inside the normal fluid spaces of the brain to decrease uh, the pressure of fluid. That can happen in the setting of hydrocephalus or um, in the setting of buildup of pressure uh, secondary to a ruptured aneurysm. So the contrast we use for um, an angiogram is uh, circulating through your arteries uh, and uh, there's multiple types of contrast. Of course, like any medication, it can have side effects and uh, it can be harmful in some patients, but there, that's where we um, get into the selection of the appropriate patient and the, and the appropriate contrast for that particular case. The biggest risk with a contrast dye is for your kidneys. And uh, of course, if you have um, limited kidney function, you should work with your physician 
to make sure that uh, when we are administering the contrast, it's not gonna be harmful to your kidneys. Of course, on our end, when we know that there's limited kidney function, we choose the appropriate contrast that's not too harmful for the kidneys. We don't use a lot of contrast and we hydrate or give a lot of fluids to the patient to prevent any sort of uh, kidney injury. Another possible issue with contrast is the possibility of developing an allergy to the contrast. That's easy to address, especially if we know about it in advance in folks that have been allergic to contrast either because of uh, the contrast that's used on a CAT scan or in other settings. And in those cases, we can give medications that almost always prevent any sort of reaction to contrast. So other than aneurysm, um, there's, there can be multiple causes of bleeding inside the brain. And uh, one of the most common ones, actually, it's not a brain, is not a brain aneurysm, but is uh, it, it's high blood pressure. Uh, in the setting of high blood pressure, uh, especially if you've had high blood, high blood pressure for a long time, your blood vessels or arteries can be weakened. And when that happens, bleeding can occur. Uh, and uh, other causes um, are much, much, much less frequent and involve some sort of structural issue with a blood vessel wall either in the setting of an arterial venous malformation because of an abnormal connection between arteries and veins or uh, uh, in the setting of uh, uh, substantial blood thinners uh, in the setting of trauma. Uh, so there can be a lot of causes, but the big ones would be probably high blood pressure or brain aneurysm. Endovascular treatments are very different than open brain surgery, and that's the benefit of uh, minimally invasive procedures, is that when we do endovascular procedures, we do them through a needle stick in the artery or the vein, uh, and we navigate everything um, through the inside. And so there's minimal trauma to the patient, and, and hence patients typically go home the same day or the next day after a procedure like that. Recovery is very fast. It typically lasts a couple of days. Um, there are a lot faster procedures, you know, they on average, they take anywhere from uh, 10 minutes to maybe 45 minutes and um, recovery, like I said, it's, it's very different. You know, with open surgery, it can range, but it can take several weeks, whereas with endovascular procedures, it's extremely fast. And, and yeah, these are, these are the terms that we uh, receive from you guys. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again in another video of the YouTube channel, the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island.